Humor is definitely not a simple subject to talk about. Even without talking about any of the foundations of humor, humor is automatically bound up in opinions and emotions of both the audience receiving the humor and whoever might be presenting that humor, be it a corporation, an individual, anyone. Just by recognizing that humor has a great deal to do with opinions means that not everyone will understand the same kind of humor or find that humor funny even if they do understand it. What it comes down to then is how can we break down the specific variables that change whether a joke is effective or ineffective? Especially with something more professional, such as a TV show, possibly commercials, it's necessary to understand what makes good humor so that the audience is not offended either intelligently or by the content of the joke. Because making a joke too simple could insult the intelligence of the person who's receiving it and obviously the content of the joke definitely makes a difference. And who it's directed to as well. For example, in 2006, a Danish newspaper published a series of cartoons that mocked Muslim beliefs in the sense that it was supposed to be a light-hearted critique on terrorism but it offended so many people that it started causing riots in the street. So to be to disregard humor as something socially unimportant or irrelevant, something that we just use to escape our troubles and to laugh, you can't say that. It can have severe consequences for failure, and it can have great payoff and reward for successful use, effective use, and effective use of it. So the three aspects of humor that you need to keep in mind are familiarity, audience, and relevance. Familiarity is all about originality. If something is original, it can be funny in its own way, some kind of comparison that has not been made before. Um, but also, on the other hand, something could be familiar to a specific group of people. It's something that they don't hear a lot about. It's something very specific to their own lives. And therefore, using that kind of familiarity uh, of knowing exactly what is being talked about in the joke, but having it be so specific to the kinds of experience that person has experienced can elicit an even greater response than a perfectly original joke might otherwise have. What familiarity really comes down to is not saying the same thing that everybody else has said before. Relevance is really the most basic out of the three. It's all about currentness. Uh, if something is popular in, say, like the 90s, referencing it now would seem a little bit on the dated side, but there's another aspect of relevance that has to do with the audience that is more audience-specific, so we will come back to that in a second. The audience is the single most important aspect of a joke. If the joke is not for the audience, the joke will do nothing. To play a certain group's experiences or expectations or their own way of thinking about things is a great way to create a fantastic punchline or something that really surprises them or a reference to something that they haven't heard in 15 years and it's just the funniest thing ever because they had totally forgotten about it. And these principles don't just apply to huge groups of people or 
having a TV show broadcast to millions upon millions of people, you can use it in your own daily life if you just pay attention to the way that you already construct your own humor. You can see these, these different mechanisms at work in real life, not just in a scripted joke. And that's really what's most important here to understand is that if we can't utilize structure or find a structure in our own humor, we can't possibly turn it into a script that we can use to convey an idea. It's just not possible because we would have no standard to base a model off of to create something that's more complex than what just comes naturally to us. That's also a great segue into talking about advanced uses of humor that are already being performed. These advanced uses fall into two distinct categories as I see them. The first is emotional direction, where the person creating the humor uses the humor as an emotional charge to the audience and then uses that emotion that's built up by the audience to perform some sort of task. It's most commonly seen today in YouTube videos of those of drama channels, YouTube drama channels. They will attack a certain popular YouTuber, make remarks about them, make fun of them, and then prompt their viewers afterwards to make some kind of uh, attack on this person, which it just sounds really bad, but it's how it's done. They use humor to start emotionally charging their audience in order to get them to start thinking irrationally and then make irrational actions that benefit the person telling the joke. The second is supplementary informative, which is a great use that I've not seen used in a terrible way thus far. But what in essence it is, is you have a main topic that lies outside of the joke. And humor is used to supplement this information to make information that would be difficult to have the general public be engaged with or the audience be engaged with for that matter and it holds their attention by making witty remarks or comparisons that they wouldn't think of about these serious topics but still having the focus be on the serious topic but using humor as a way to keep attention as well as provoke some kind of thought and allow for a mental break to have people be able to think about complex topics as they're being presented. Kind of like cleansing your palate after a meal that has a lot of flavor so that you can go to a different meal and get a different kind of flavor out. It's that break in information that allows people to think. What's advanced about this humor, however, is the fact that the humor is wor working on something outside of itself. Let me explain. Even with emotional direction, when the main subject is in fact the humor, the humor is a vehicle for some other kind of action or motive. Uh, the same with supplementary informative, whereas um, emotional direction is to charge the emotions of the audience and get them to do something that doesn't lie within the joke. Supplementary informative uh, is presenting a topic that is not about the joke and uses the joke to add something to it. They both do things outside of the joke which is the main point. 
if you can't get outside of the joke, there's no way to convey a serious message through humor. Unfortunately, I could not find any instance where humor was directly used to make a serious point that actually worked the way it was intended. The CDC tried this with um, a zombie campaign to promote emergency planning, but what humor really ends up doing in that kind of situation is bringing a lot of attention to the subject, but not actually having people retain the messages that are within that subject, even if the jokes do contain what is supposed to be the true information, the real message. People can't separate the humor from the information when they're together yet. But I have hope that there is some kind of way to construct a joke in this manner and use humor to effectively communicate serious topics by itself to be able to grab attention as well as convey information simultaneously. It's just that at the current moment, we don't understand enough about the basic principles of humor, which brings me back to my main point. If we don't understand what we use for humor in our daily lives, we can't possibly script something to create that kind of humor into something more. The information for this video came from a recent paper I wrote titled A Conversation Via Humor. Uh, the references for that will be listed here somewhere. <laughs> and, well, just see if you can take these basic understandings that I've laid out and analyze your own humor and maybe someone will be able to figure out how to do the impossible or what seems to be impossible now with humor thanks for watching and stay funny